Hello again. My name is Masood Olia, and I'm a professor here in uh, School of Engineering at Wentworth University in the Mechanical Engineering program. And I'm back here with another example, uh, which you've already seen this problem uh, done differently using the relative motion approach. And I want to show you a different method. I want to use IC method, the instantaneous center of zero velocity method to solve this problem. So let's uh, take a look at uh, what's given and what we are trying to find. So we have two gears, basically a gear with a radius of 10 inch and a smaller gear, gear B with a radius of five inch. Then the two are connected with an arm AB, but actually uh, gear A is rotating at 40 radians per second clockwise and gear B, uh, arm AB rather, sorry, is rotating uh, clockwise at 60 radians per second. So basically you have two motors, independent motors that are rotating gear A and arm AB, right? But, uh, and, and the, uh, uh, what we are trying to find is angular speed of gear B at this instant. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, the, f the typical mistake is that you think that this is a, uh, two gears are fixed at their center and rotating uh, their impure rotation. That's true for gear A, but gear B actually is going through combination of translation and rotation. So it's rotating and translating at the same time, create curvilinear translation around this larger gear, gear A. So I did this also in the other video. I said, okay, if we classify the type of motion we have, gear A, its motion is pure rotation, since it's fixed at A. And uh, arm AB, connecting the two gears, the two centers, is also pure rotation, because it's also fixed at A. And then that leaves gear B, which is going through combination, uh, of translation and rotation, we refer to that as general plane motion, combination of translation and rotation. So in the other video, I mentioned that if you make a mistake and think of this as two gears that are fixed at their centers and they're in pure rotation, right, then Really finding uh, omega b, it's very simple. If this guy is going at 40 radians per second, look at the ratio of the radii, 10 to 5. Gear b has to go twice as fast. Smaller gear rotates faster, right? Larger gear, slower. So twice as fast based on this ratio, 10 to 5. So omega a would have been, uh, if omega a is 40 radians per second, omega b would have been 80 radians per second. That's not the case. You guys, if you have seen the other video, the correct answer for omega b happens to be 260 radians per second clockwise. So I suggest you watch the video related to a different approach, relative motion. Let's see if we get the same result using a different method. So you guys, uh, again, if you have watched the video, I, we need to use the contact point. D is the contact between the two gears. So it's not a point on arm AB or uh, it's either in the front or in the back. So arm AB could be, could be in the front or in the back. So D is just a contact point between the two gears. Okay, so for the IC method, we need velocity of two points on the body that is going through combination of translation and rotation. So the two points happen to be point D and B. Uh, and finding uh, velocity of D is very easy because gear A is fixed and rotating at 40 uh, radians per second, right? So velocity of D must be R omega, R is 10 inch, right? And omega is 40, so that's 400 inches per second. So I'm gonna actually draw right here my gear B 
and this is velocity of d, which happens to be 400, right, inches per second. And then I need velocity of another point, which is obviously that would be point B. So if this is arm AB, right, which is rotating at 60 radians per second, what would be velocity of B? Pure rotation, also R omega, but look at the radius, 15 inches, right? 10 inch here and five inch here. Okay, so 15 times 60, that is 900 inches per second. So here we go, this is velocity of point D, which I said is 400, and this is velocity of B, which just to be, to be consistent in terms of the magnitude, almost twice, a little bit less than twice, so about this much, 900. Okay, that's velocity of B. All right. So the instantaneous center, if you have velocity of two points, and by the way, this is a special case. In general, if you have velocity of two points, you draw perpendicular lines to the two velocities and the point of intersection becomes the instantaneous center. But what if the two velocities are parallel to one another? That would be the, the, the special case. Yes, you see velocity of D and B are parallel to one another. So how do you find, how do you locate the IC or point C, as I call it, the center of rotation. So what you do, you connect point D to B, and then you connect the extremities of velocity of D and velocity of B. The point of intersection, I call point C. All right? So that's the way you locate the instantaneous center. So what is uh, the meaning of this? C is instantaneous center, which means velocity of C is zero, which means the body, imagine if the gear at this instant, gear B, is in pure rotation about C. So the instantaneous center by the definition of center should have zero velocity. And clearly you could see that this guy, based on velocity of the up and B down, it's rotating clockwise. So our objective is omega B, to calculate omega b, and remember when we did it based on the other method, it was 260. Let's see if we can figure out how to find velocity of uh, omega b. So the, the easiest way, guys, probably is to use similar triangles. So look at this triangle I'm going to redraw here for you. By this triangle, I mean this one. See? This triangle. All right. So here's point D. Here's C. I need to figure out this dimension, guys. Once I figure out this dimension, I'm going to call it x, then I'm all set. And remember, this is the radius. This is BD, right? That's five inches, right? And keep in mind that we know that this is 400, right? And this is 900. So basically, you could say uh, similar triangles, right? 400 divided by x, right, 400 divided by x, or the slope is the same as, what, 1300 divided by 5. So if I go ahead and solve for x, let's see, well, x becomes what? x becomes 5 times 400 over 1300. It's like saying that's 20 divided by 13. Let me just leave it like that which is actually not a nice number. It's going to be one point something. So x is 20 uh, over 13 inches. Now, how am I going to use this x to find omega b? Look, guys, once you find the instantaneous center, then since that body is in pure rotation about this point, then velocity of d, in this case, can be determined by using r times omega, pure rotation, but r is from the center to point d. So that's cd or x in our case. You see that? Times what? Times omega of b. So therefore, omega of b becomes velocity of d divided by cd or x. So if I go ahead 
and velocity of this, since I already know is 400, divided by x, which is 20 over 13, guess what? I end up getting exactly 260 radians per second. And that's what I got based on the relative motion in the other video that I showed you. By the way, we could have used velocity of b to get the same uh, answer by saying velocity of b is r from c to b times omega of b, but then you have to just have to go calculate cb. cb, by the way, would be 5 inch minus uh, 20 over 13, which is like, I guess it's 45 over 13. But doesn't matter, you will get the same uh, result. Okay, guys, I hope you um, enjoyed this video. As always, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I would really appreciate if you subscribe. We'll have videos every week. And um, uh, related to different topics, it's not necessarily dynamics. It could be, you know, vibration. It could be system dynamics, it could be statics, mechanics of material, and so on. Again, thank you for watching, and see you soon.